Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, The Bald Explorer. This is a continuation of my story. Haven't done one for a while, but this is where I'm relating the story of my life and some of the projects and things that I've been doing uh, since I was a kid, really, and my interest, particularly in filming, uh, and what led up to making The Bald Explorer. It's my backstory. So now the last time I was speaking to you, I was telling you about children's television. I told you all about the children's television I made snug and cosy with a, a Scottish broadcaster that went on ITV in the 19, mid-1997, uh, sorry, 1996 and 1997, the mid-90s. And also then as we got towards the end of uh, the millennia really, um, I told you about the pantomime that I was involved in and that led me to making a couple of other pilots on um, kids programs and I've linked to those. There's the, the Boneheads and the Dimwits which were put together with a team of um, other enthusiasts and we, we tried to pitch that but it, it didn't go. So today I want to move away from children's television and talk about something where I moved into grown-up or tried to move into grown-up TV. Now, if you've got children watching this, I just should warn you that I'm going to be talking about somewhat adult themes. Um, so I would let the kids uh, watch something else. <laughs> You'll see why. So there was I making Snug and Cozy and some other kids things and I was pitching them. We were getting nowhere and I thought well why don't I try adult television and by adult television I mean normal television, grown-up television because I'd been doing children's television so it was, every time I mentioned adult television or grown-up television people were going mm, yeah what are you talking about and they go no 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 <laughs> no not not that sort of television, just what we would class as ordinary television, just not children's television. And I was thinking, well, there's people in the industry probably know me from Snug and Cozy, or at least associate that name. And the problem is that you can very easily get typecast in television for doing a certain sort of genre. And I didn't want that to happen. So I figured, why don't we do something which is a little bit more risque and a bit more on the, more towards the adult scene um, so that I can firmly show that I'm not a, a child performer, as it were. So I was looking around at what was on the television to get a measure of what was going out. And I noticed, you couldn't help but notice really, that Channel 5 here in Britain Channel 5 was making around the year 2000 a lot of what can only really be described as soft porn um, under the guise of sex education or um, that sort of thing. It was fairly late night, it was sort of after the watershed at nine o'clock and it would go out and really it was, um, it was just trying to get ratings by probably the most common denominator and the most base sort of thing and that is scantily clad women um, running around and blokes chasing them and, and that sort of thing. And I thought, and they were doing this seriously, so I thought well there could be a spoof here. Now at the time there was the beginning of mockumentary coming out on television. There was a series called People Like Us which looked at different types of people, but it was a, a very much a spoof, very cleverly done, that was on the BBC. And then I think just after we'd made our documentary, I think um, there was The Office, which of course was a, a bit of a mockumentary as well. So there was a lot of this comedy, this style of comedy happening, and I thought that's what I'd like to do. So I thought we'd take, do a spoof on these grown-up adult programs. So I came up with this concept called the sex detective and the idea was there was this character called Steve Snoops 
who was very much a, a throwback from the 60s, complete with, well, actually, uh, at the time I was wearing contact lenses, and this was before I lost my eye. So I had these, um, they were in fact Ray-Ban sunglasses or the knockoff versions, cheap versions, with the lenses popped out. So they didn't actually have any lenses in them at all, but very thick sort of black glasses. And I had a black suit on, very sort of close fitting and chose some very 1960s style, slightly raunchy music and filmed a lot of sequences down alleyways and the backs of brick premises with old doors and things. So you, you got this grainy 1960s feel about it with all the links that were going to link the little parts of this program together. So we wanted people not to know that it wasn't real so that people watching it would think this was a real documentary, but actually, as you carried on watching, you thought this can't be true. That was, that was the nature of it. And I wanted to put together, put together a pilot of about 10 minutes to give a sample, because I thought you can't just write this down, nobody will understand. I also, like with the Snug and Cozy uh, series, I wanted to show that I could be the producer or the director and possibly, the main presenter, although I appreciated that um, in order to get bums on seats, perhaps they would have to have somebody else. But I wanted to be the main presenter because I also was interested in the pre presentation type of things and, and comedy. So that was very much the idea that we would work with one broadcaster. Having had the experience with Snow and Cozy, we'd work with a broadcaster to try and uh, have a better option of making something ourselves. So that was, that was the concept. Um, so this program, The Sex Detective, the idea was Steve Snoops looking around suburbia about what goes on behind closed doors. And of course, the things that we wanted to show that was going on behind closed doors in suburban Britain was really outlandish stuff that wouldn't actually be a thing. So, but done in such a way that it looked real. So the first thing I needed was a bunch of actors who could act in a realistic way, not from a script. I wanted to do all the sequences where we had the little storylines improvised so that we would rehearse, so I would know what the purpose of the project was um, and we would rehearse and make up through improvisation, roughly what was going to go on, and then we would film it. And some bits we would film the rehearsals, and some bits we would just rehearse it and then film it. So everyone was involved and, and also helped, in a way, write the script. Not that anything was written down, if you see what I mean. It was all improvised as we went, but to a structure. So we, I had a number of themes, a number of projects in which the character would give a little intro about, and then you would cut to this scene, it would come back for a comment, and then it would go to another scene. That was the, the sort of concept, really. Um, and so we had a number of setups. One of them um, was, for example, a woman, a youngish woman in her 20s, who had a fetish for all sorts of different types of tape, you know, sellotape, masking tape, gaffer tape, a carpet tape, any kind of tape, and each tape, she would have, you know, she would have it on her body and would touch it and feel it, and but be very serious about it. And her boyfriend would rip it off, and she would have some sort of sexual response to it. And she would, you would see her going round shops, um, getting aroused, looking at rolls of tape, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so uh, we didn't film this, but it would, that would be the subsequent bit that you would see her in hardware shops. Um, and so in a way, a hardware shop with all sorts, or a stationary shop, would be like somebody else going into a sex shop and looking at uh, all the, uh, the sex toys and things. But for her, it was these different rolls of tape going, oh yes, you know, a quarter inch of, of that on my um, upper arm would be this, that and the other. And of course, done in a very serious way, it's, it's sort of, titivating in a way. Well, and funny. That was the main thing. It had to be funny. So we had that. We had, um, we had uh, a couple who were swingers and they were going to meet other swingers, which of course is a thing. But so we had 
we were interviewing, supposedly interviewing, a couple who were getting ready and getting their house all looking very nice for another couple who were going to join them that evening, intercut with the other couple who we went onto a tube train and fil filmed them. We weren't really supposed to film on tube trains, but we did this. Um, we filmed them surreptitiously talking about the anticipation of meeting the other couple. It was all very sort of seemed very logical and serious, except that when they met up, what it was is that they had a slipper fetish. So there wasn't any real sex in the way that you and I would think of it, but th there would be this huge arousal for putting slippers on and off. And it was all done very seriously and, and with the sort of all the, you know, the sort of sexual sound effects that you would have with people, but with slippers. So we, I wanted these sort of preposterous setups. Another one was this woman who uh, considered herself a prostitute and would dress up in the most sluttiest clothes. Um, and we filmed a sequence of her by this railway bridge at late at night with a single street lamp going down. It was all very raunchy. We put some raunchy music on it and all of this. And then in the interview with Steve Snoop, she's telling him all the sort of different things that, you know, one could get up to with her. It, and it was a sort of comic, but the, it was also tragic as well, because it occurs to Steve Snoop's while this is going on and he joins her to see where she's hanging, you know, street walking and all of that. And you realise that the place that she goes to and all the places that she always frequents is places where nobody goes at night at all. There'd be no reason to them. So the, the, there was this, this street was, there was no through traffic and you, you sort of get the conclusion actually, she's a bit of a fantasist and if, and, and if somebody turns up, she would just shrink into the bushes. So it was, she was a bit of a comedy tragedy figure. Um, we, I turned my front room into the interior of a suburban house in which um, a couple were running a mail order sex uh, toy shop. Hello, Big Dildos R Us. This is uh, quite a um, comprehensive catalogue. How long have you been uh, running the business? Oh, uh, about six years. We've been, been five doing it years. For five. Been doing it five. Five. Five years. So they would have these sex toys which they would be selling and um, uh, the husband also was a stand-up comedian and we had to, we filmed a sequence in my bathroom where he's standing in the bath with these funny little rubber cups on his nipples and he's standing you know in shorts and he's delivering these very bad jokes and uh, the, he was hilarious the, the the actors that we we managed to find were absolutely hilarious um, and really, really, you know, top people. Um, of course, all unknown, all unknown. So nobody knew. So they looked like real people. Um, and he was, he was just so funny. And then his wife, the lady who played his wife, she was equally funny. We had some absolute hilarity filming this thing. Um, and there's a sequence in the kitchen where we're drinking tea and Steve Snoops is very seriously engaged and asking them about how they make money and what is the, the top sex aid and all of this. And of course they're going through the catalogue and these are the most ridiculous things that are being sold. Uh, so it was, it was great fun with that. And golly, we, we were laughing, we kept falling about laughing as we improvised this whole thing. It, it was hilarious, but uh, it, it all came together really well. And there's a sequence in which, you know, someone rings up and, and they're saying, oh yes, everything is sent out in plain clothes. It's all in brown paper. You would have no idea what it was that we send out. Um, and of course that's, you know, what you, what you would expect. Except that we intercut that with the, the husband doing the postal run where he takes the parcels to the post office. And somebody had obviously ordered a blow up doll, a blow up doll. And yes, it was in brown paper, except that we had it blown up and we, we had it. So it was so obvious what it was in the brown paper, but they're going, oh yeah, yeah, no, it's all in brown paper. It's, 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 it's very discreet. Um, so that was all, and we, we filmed him going into the post office and he said he was so nervous walking as the actor, no, so nervous going into the post office, but we were sort of filming it handheld, fly on the wall and all of this. It was great fun. Um, I'd bought myself a entry-level broadcast camera at this stage, a Sony PD-150. And I think it cost me about four grand. 
Um, it was very much the fly on the wall. It was only a smallish camera. It was back in the day when you filmed on tape, but you then um, digitized it afterwards. So it was just getting into digital uh, editing and, that, and digital filming. Um, and we'd got the actors through something called shooting people. Uh, this was a, 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 you got this digest. It was a, it was a group that organized this um, email that came out every week. And in the email was um, offers of filmmakers who were making projects and actors who were offering their services, mostly for free. So it was a lot of first time filmmakers, student filmmakers saying, I'm making this short film for a Cannes Film Festival or a, the Sundance Film Festival or something to try and further their career. And actors would happily get engaged in these projects so that they could get um, a showreel of them actually doing something plus experience working with young and up and coming film directors. And so it was a very um, happening, if I can use that phrase, type of thing. And I'd put my advert to get these people and people sent in their CVs and their photos and their show reels on VHS. And you'd go through and you eventually find, you know, the actors and people that you want. And it was amazing that everybody was prepared to do this for free. They loved the concept. And of course they all got a VHS and a screen credit for it. And, and funny enough, I've seen a couple of people later on and there's, they, you know, the appearance in the, the sex detective as if it was a big thing. Anyway, when it was all put together and edited up, um, I sent it round to all the broadcasters as before and a number of them weren't interested. It came back, you know, even though it was well put together. And we had emails such as, really liked your pilot, very professionally put together, but it's just not for us, which you can understand. Um, but Channel 4 got in touch and said, really like this, we want to interview you about it. So I thought, blimey. So I thought, okay, so I got a friend of mine to go with me who had done some uh, graphics and stuff, helped me with just some very basic graphics in it. So we went up together and on the day, and we went to Channel 4, wherever the place was, and this saw the commissioning editor for, you know, and I thought, well, even if it doesn't go anywhere, we have met the commissioning editor and maybe it could lead to somewhere. He seem, seemed incredibly positive. So that was all very exciting. Anyway, we went to see the guy. He was a strange, strange chap, but very enthusiastic for it. And he said, he said, actually, you know, really loved it, made, me, made him laugh. He said, you know, if you didn't know it was a spoof, you'd think it was real. And he, he said, there's plenty of people in this building. If they'd seen this, they'd have just thought it was real. And um, so that was, that was encouraging. But, and you knew there was going to be a but, we were making, we were pitching to a slot, a special a slot, they, you know. So Channel 4 had a number of different... Um, slots that you would put the TV programs into, like the nine o'clock to 10 o'clock slot or the 10 to 10.30 slot, whatever it was. And each of these slots would have a budget attached to them. And this particular slot that we'd pitched it for was the budget was 50,000 pounds an episode, which, you know, seems a staggering amount of money for half an hour of television. Um, but back then, around 2000, that was sort of the going rate for um, after watershed prime time telly. So I was convinced that we could make this for a lot less. I mean, we hadn't paid anybody. Um, it, it, you work out the basic wages. These are unknown all the time. You'd be using plenty of unknown actors, so they wouldn't be demanding super fees. You'd pay them the, whatever the the proper rate is. Um, you'd have your camera crew, which wouldn't be very big because it's fly on the wall. So you probably only need perhaps five members of crew. And then it just needs to be edited by perhaps two or three people. You've got the producer. So I, in actual fact, wages wouldn't have been that high. So I, and um, you'd be paying for the location, people's rooms, houses, places. Again, um, you're in there with not lots of lights and things because you're doing it fly on the wall. It's got to look as if it's just a single cameraman filming following the action. So in actual fact, it was really, I thought, very cheap. Plus the scripts were 
not written as such, but it was improvised. So you get the actors together, you'd improvise the thing um, and then film it all. And so it would be part manufactured by the improvisation, but also part in how, in how you edit it. Now, as it just happens, my phone is ringing. I forgot to take that off. So I'm gonna blast through because I'm virtually at the end. Anyway, in the end, Channel 4 turned around and said, we really like this, but we can't do it because we think this is a £100,000 episode to make and not 50. And no matter how much I went through how we could do it, how it would be made for a lot less, they said, I just don't think we could do it at that. We love the script, we love the direction, we love you as the sex detective, but we just think that for Channel 4 to make it, that's the money that we would uh, have to put at it, and the budget for the slot that we've got isn't that big. And, and that was it. We came away with a, a show that was liked, but it didn't go. And nearly, nearly going doesn't pay the mortgage. And it was a it was a huge blow, I can tell you, um, because I was convinced that we could make it for that. Nobody else was interested in the in the program after that. Everybody I've shown it to loved the concept, which is bizarre. And of course, it knocks your confidence. And uh, anyway, it didn't it didn't happen. But that didn't stop me from making quite a few more pilots, as I was absolutely hell bent on trying to work in this medium that I so very much loved and felt that I had some talent for. The sad part was in all of the, the pilots that I did, people said they loved them, they thought they were well made, etc. But not once, not once did any of these um, commissioning editors say, look, you know, you've got something. It may, you may not be making the right thing for us, but we should partner you up with this production company because you know, clearly you've gone the extra mile by making this stuff because not many people did. But that never happened. And um, down the road, disillusionment came, of course. But before I got that, I made a few more pilots. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to this story about uh, a ridiculous thing. Um, it is an, I think it's on YouTube or on Vimeo, but it may be marked as private. So if you're interested in watching the pilot for this program that we made, The Sex Detective, I can send you the link, but you'll probably best to email me, richard at vobes.com, um, because I had to move it away because I had children's stuff on and uh, like the snug and cozy stuff on and, um, and I didn't want to get on the wrong side of YouTube. So, um, there you go. Anyway, don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe, become a patron, support what I do. I'll make more videos. Sorry, this has been a bit of a long one. Um, and I'll be out. The weather is, is good again. Uh, the uh, camper van is up and running now. So I will be out making the walks. I know you miss them and they will be coming very soon. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.